we know it's a global trade. We know that there are lots of other countries that are buying it. Uh, Japan, Germany, Western Europe, there are other countries involved in the trade. So it would take a, a, a really cooperative effort to do that. Um, but I think a, a great step would be for countries to implement the Security Council Resolution 2199, which calls on member countries of the UN to stop this trade, stop outlaw the trade from uh, Iraq and Syria. And if, if, if it was a concerted effort, it could have a real impact. The, the market is very diffuse, it's very scattered, there are lots of parts to it. It's, it's almost, it almost never happens that a, an eventual buyer actually pays the person who's doing the looting. Um, but it starts that way. You know, let's say ISIL, which is not particularly looting site, but we know they're actually giving licenses, so they're taking a cut of the, of the profits. Uh, they charge money for people who are looting. So, the, you know, the material goes, it may go through several hands, smugglers, several dealers, and end up in, in a, a collector's hand. So that collector's money may not be going directly to the, um, to the ISIL group, but in the long term, it, it essentially is the same thing. Because if you turned off that demand by the collectors who are buying, down the line, they would stop purchasing from ISIL. The looting affects not just uh, the property ownership of cultural objects that may be valuable, but also uh, heritage, cultural heritage that, that is, uh, belongs to people in countries and, and is shared by communities. And uh, even worse, we know that it can contribute to terrorism on the, on the scale of what ISIL is doing. So do we really want that on our hands if we're thinking of buying these antiquities? That's why they're calling them blood antiquities, like blood diamonds, that this is a trade that has blood on it and dirt on it. So it's a, it is very much a moral issue.